Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the 48th commencement ceremony of Franklin University, Switzerland. Okay, if you applaud at that, the rest is going to be easy today here. <laughs> Vorrei innanzitutto dare il mio più cordiale benvenuto agli ospiti ticinesi, agli amici e ai genitori di lingua italiana a questa nostra cerimonia di consegna dei diplomi di laurea. Today is a very special moment in the life of Franklin University. It is first and foremost a day of celebration. Many of you have come a great distance to join friends and family and our trustees have come from far and wide to join with our dedicated faculty and staff to participate in what is for us the most important day of the year. Today we recognize the accomplishments of our senior class and our graduate students who sit before you in this auditorium. You guys are standing, by the way, so maybe you could, you could, you could, you could yeah. So, yes, sit down. You have a chance to stand a little later, yes. Good. Who sit before you in this auditorium. Each of you should be proud of what you have accomplished and what you're about to celebrate. And we as an institution are justly proud of you as well. Franklin is a unique institution. The makeup of our student body, our faculty, our staff, and our trustees is international. Franklin enjoys accreditation in both the United States and in Switzerland. Our mission is to inspire students to engage the world, to challenge to students through a curriculum that integrates liberal arts with professional pathways and classroom learning with academic travel, to produce critical thinkers who are culturally literate, ethically aware, and intellectually courageous. You, the graduating class of 2018, have traversed a course that prepared you to become responsible, compassionate, and collaborative leaders in what is an increasingly complex and interconnected world. You have met the academic challenges of the institution, and of this you should be proud. But this is also the moment to reflect that you've not done it alone. You have been sustained by your friends here at Franklin and elsewhere. You have also been supported by family members who were usually far away. So at this point, I would like the family of our students, and I'd like our students to hold your applause for a second, please. I would like the family of our students, the parents, the grandparents, siblings, spouses, any other family members to stand up. And let's recognize them with our applause. The faculty-student relationship is at the heart of the university experience. Each of you during your stay at Franklin has been assisted, encouraged, advised, and often, I am sure, even cajoled by faculty members here at Franklin who have been your biggest fans, watching you grow and eventually watching you succeed. So at this point, I would like to ask all the members of our faculty to stand. I would also like to introduce our trustees whose dedication to Franklin is unmatched. You will be hearing from some of them in a few minutes, but would the following trustees please stand and remain standing when your name is called. Pascal Tone. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, let's do this. Let's, let's, wait. let's hold your applause and we'll... Uh, Pat, you have to remain standing here. Yeah. They never do what I say, but I'm, I'm, I try. Yeah. Cabell West, Laurent Bollet, Philip Renault, Jennifer Raley, Kim Hildebrandt, 
Peter Ashenbrenner, Inigo Garcia, and trustee designate Jim Leslie. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Franklin University's Chair of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Kim Hildebrandt. Thank you. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, signore e signori, but most of all, good evening graduating class of 2018. It's an honor for me to stand here before this graduating class who no doubt have long anticipated this moment with quite some anxiety. But may I just remind the class that that anxiety can now be forgotten. Because, dear class of 2018, you've made it. In a short while, a new part of your life commences, and I can assure you that all of us at Franklin, independent of our role, are very proud of you. Hopefully, you too are also just as proud of having graduated from this great university. I know for certain that I am, as many years ago, I sat where you're now sitting, as did many of my esteemed colleagues on the board. However, I do know of certain persons who are even proud of you all, your parents and families, to whom I extend my wholehearted appreciation for having sent their sons and daughters here to Franklin. And it is a truly a pleasure to see so many parents and families present here today. Class of 2018, you've now been prepared to become citizens of the world. And we hope you take with you everything that you've learned whilst at Franklin and transform it into the tools necessary to become exemplary leaders in this very challenging world. But do not forget passion, dedication, and purpose, as balance is not only a key factor in your professional calling, but also in your personal life. Passion and dedication are certainly two very appropriate, de appropriate definitions of another group taking immense pleasure in today's events, Franklin University's Board of Trustees. Please join me in applauding my distinguished colleagues who continue to work tirelessly for this great university. <laughs> On the platform with us, and more precisely, right behind me. There's also a second group, the faculty. It is an honor for me, on behalf of the whole board, to also recognize today the remarkable faculty of Franklin and for the true devotion with which they transmit academic learning to our fortunate students. May I once again ask you to join me in applauding also the faculty. And now, dear graduating class, all that remains is for me to congratulate you on your achievement. But before doing so, allow me to remind you not to forget your Franklin family, as we will certainly not forget you. Congratulations, class of 2018. Mr. Hildebrandt will now present the Ursula Gentile Lawyer Outstanding Service Award. The Ursula Gentile Lawyer Outstanding Service Award was established in 2006 by the Franklin University Switzerland Board of Trustees to recognize outstanding members of our alumni community for exemplary service to Franklin University and for their enthusiastic leadership and support of its mission and goals. The, the award reflects the honor and credit that recipients bring to the university through their actions and, con and contributions. Past award recipients include Claudia Figueroa, John Steinbreder, Steinbreder, Jim Moore, Sally Dodge, Sheikh Hussein Albanavi, Ned Lynch, Meg Salia, India Havel, and Tom Cool. This year's Ursula Gentile Lover Alumni Acceptor Award is Rene Music. Rene Music graduated from Franklin University, Switzerland in 2011 with a degree in international relations. After graduation, she received her master's degree from the London School of Economics 
and began a career in public relations in London. She now lives in San Francisco, where she founded and runs a communications agency, Brands to Life US, that works with technology companies around the world to increase their brand awareness in the US market and globally. Brands to Life US has been recognized this month by the Holmes Report as one of the best new American agencies. Renee and her husband Inigo, a fellow Franklin alumnus and member of the Franklin Board of Trustees, believe strongly in Franklin's mission of providing a cross-cultural and multinational education and, as a result, continue to be actively involved in the Franklin community. This has included leading the Franklin Club of London, speaking with high school students about her experience at Franklin and attending accepted student receptions as an admissions ambassador, welcoming recent graduates to the Franklin alumni communities in London and San Francisco, participating in and supporting fundraising efforts, including class, out, class outreach to encourage widespread participation, and most recently serving as a class agent advisor for the 2010 decade in anticipation of Franklin's 50th anniversary and global reunion in 2020. Congratulations, Renee. Thank you, Kim, and congratulations to the class of 2018. You have such an incredibly exciting time ahead and such a special place to always return to here at Franklin University, Switzerland. Each time I return to Franklin, I still can't believe I had the incredible privilege of being able to be a part of this community and live a part of it for four years. I'm very honored to receive this recognition from the Alumni Council. My husband, Inigo, and I believe strongly in Franklin's mission of providing a cross-cultural learning environment that inspires students to engage the world. And we recognize constantly the significant impact this kind of international liberal arts education and being a part of the Franklin community has on our lives, but also on the lives of other graduates, their families, and the broader communities in which we live and work. I look forward to being closely involved in this community as well as advocating strongly for Franklin for many years to come. Thank you. As Kim Hildebrandt reminded us, Franklin University will celebrate its 50th anniversary two years from now, in 2020. Among the many individuals who have helped Franklin achieve its success, there are three members of our community who passed away this year and whose contributions were fundamental. I would like to ask Trustee Pascal Tone, former chair of the Board of Trustees, founder of the university, and its first president, to come to the podium. When I arrived in Lugano in 1969, I had the privilege to meet each of these three individuals. Over the intervening years, we became friends, colleagues, and compatriots. That relationship remained for the last 49 years. Professor Jacques Villeray was one of Franklin's founders, a Fulbright scholar, teacher of French, French civilization and filmmaking for 33 years, he was the quintessential Frenchman. Born in Burgundy, Professor Villeray grew up in Paris and lived through the German occupation during World War II. He later moved to England to learn English, followed by the United States to study the implications of experimental audiovisual tools as didactic aids. He returned to Europe for the application of those principles, settling in Lugano for the remainder of his life. During his teaching career, Professor Villeray led many academic travels, mostly to France. He was a demanding teacher who organized unforgettable trips to pl places such as Cannes for film, Ile Saint Marguerite for archaeology, history, and ecology, Antibes for Picasso, Grasse for perfume, Chateau Neuf de Pape for the history of wine, Avignon for religion, Les Beaux, 
Saint-Rémy, Arles for Van Gogh, Saint-Tropez for the impress, post-impressionist painters and the beach of Pompelon. Professor Villaray, my dear friend and colleague, will be remembered for his passion and for his fundamental contribution to Franklin University. Professor Brian Stanford was beloved and respected teacher and colleague. He taught at Franklin from 1970 when the school opened its doors until his retirement in 2015. Founder of the Department of Art and Art History, he had a profound influence on the evolution of the university, offering classes on classical modernism, Picasso, and the psychology of art. These courses inspired students in all disciplines, and his studio art courses in painting and photography brought out the creativity of many future artists. Professor Stanford led numerous academic travels to Cornwall, London, to explore the theme of classical modernism. The travels combined both art history with visits to London's National Gallery, the Courtauld Institute of Art, Sotheby's, Salisbury Cathedral, Stonehenge, Kettle Yard Museum, and King's College Chapel in Cambridge. Professor Stanford will be remembered by Franklin for his depth, passion, and intelligence, and elegance in everything he did. Admired by his students, he is remembered fondly also for his compassion, kindness, and limitless support in and out of the classroom. His former colleague and friend, Britt Marie Musi, was a pillar of the university for over 40 years. She represented really the best of Franklin. Born and raised in Sweden, she arrived in Lugano at the age of 21, having already traveled through most of Europe. During her remarkable life, Britt Marie succeeded in creating a family, establishing Franklin's Office of Student Life, being the first recipient of the Outstanding Staff Performance Award, and becoming the mayor of Campione d'Italia. Within this tapestry of exceptional accomplishments, the strongest thread was her unwavering dedication to family, friends, colleagues, and her beloved students. Britt Marie exemplified the Franklin experience, which is all about supporting our students and knowing their individual needs and their dreams. Franklin University, Switzerland will never forever be grateful for the immeasurable contributions of Jacques Villeray, Brian Stanford, and Britt Marie Musi. Please join me in a moment of silence in their memory. Thank you very much. We are pleased this year to offer an honorary degree that is the degree honoris causa to two individuals whose accomplishments have been significant and enduring. These individuals have been recommended to the faculty, endorsed by the faculty, and approved by the Board of Trustees of the University. By allowing us to honor, um, to honor them, they honor us. Will Dean Steinert Barella please bring the first recipient of an honorary degree to the podium? Will Trustee Tone please read the Laudatio? Shiku Sain Albanawi is chairman and CEO of the Industrial Group. He is the author of The Unknown Leader, Discover the Leader in Year, published in 2012. He received an AA degree from Franklin University, Switzerland in 1976, and I was the president at that time and was delighted to hand him his diploma. He went on to receive a BA degree in Business Administration and Political Science and an MBA from Rollins College in 1978 and 1980, respectively. In 2010, he established the Albanawi Scholarship Program at Flanken University, Switzerland to help organize the university's first alumni event in Saudi Arabia. Uh, yeah. uh, in recognition of his exemplary service, leadership, and support of the university, he received in 2012 the Ursula Gentile Aware Outstanding Service Award. Sheikh Albanawi has been a leading voice for gender equality in the Middle East. 
He personally advocated for gender equality in the Arab region in his book, The Unknown Leader, where a chapter, quote, the mind knows no gender, the emerging promise of female leadership, encapsulates the importance of providing equal opportunities for human and economic advancement to both genders. In 2010, under his leadership, the industrial group appointed Dr. May Aldabag to its board of directors. This was the first time a woman, independent and not a family member, was appointed to the board of directors of a Saudi company. Dr. al Bagag is certainly assistant professor of social research and policy at the New York University, Abu Dhabi. Sheikh al Banawi has also been instrumental in creating a new initiative, the Young Arab Women's Leadership Initiative, based on his vision of a program that enables young women in the Arab region to, quote, go above and beyond their male counterparts and defy the status quo. A director for the leadership initiative is currently being recruited with a project launch date for November 2018. For his leadership as a philanthropist and supporter of gender equality, Franklin University Switzerland awards Sheikh Hussein al Banawi the Doctorate of Humane Letters Honoris Causa. Good afternoon. Can't tell you how excited I am to be back at Franklin. For me, this recognition is like no other because it's from Franklin. My first alma mater, when I received my first college degree, where I was the first student from the Gulf region and where I first got started shaping my vision for the future. Three firsts. This is why this award is truly special. I want to thank Chairman Pat Tone, Pat, Chairman Kim Hildebrandt, Kim, esteemed members of the Board of Trustees, President Greg Gordon, Greg, and Dean Sarah, and the entire faculty for this memorable award, more so for the distinctive meaning behind it. When I know I'll be standing here today and have this chance to speak for a few minutes to my future fellow alumni, I pondered, what do you want to hear? More importantly, what do you need to hear? What do you look for at this defining moment in your lives? And from there, I've put together a few thoughts. As you receive your diplomas, some of you will start careers, others will go to graduate school, and, and while others will start a family. First thing I would ask you is, when you leave this grand hall, let's say tomorrow, take out a pad and write down the following title my lifetime story and start thinking how would you want your life story to read what would you like each chapter to say what would you want your accomplishments to look like how do you hope your relationship to shape your life how do you wish your dreams to be realized how do you want to face obstacles Celebrate successes, grapple with failures, endure loss, fight battles, capture opportunities, 
and make ends meet throughout your lifetime journey. The first thing in writing your story is to recognize that you will be making choices that will impact your life for better or for worse, in small ways and in significant ways. My advice to you today is to ask yourself two questions. One, what kind of choices I need to make so my story ends up being a gift to my loved ones and a cause of pride to my community? Choices that help you leave a mark, make a difference, even in modest ways, but nevertheless a difference. When we are young, we have a world waiting for us and so many choices to make. And as we grow older, our choices become less and less. However, every choice you make will contribute to the life you lead and how high you will reach. Two, how do I make best use of my time? Time is humans, humans' most valuable depletable resource. It has less relevant, relevance during our youth and far more as we grow older. A year when we are young carries a different weight on life scale as to when we age. As you are making your choices, start by defining the values and principles you wish to live by. These will in turn become your personal lighthouse. Your values will act as your guide in rough waters and your compass in open terrain. When the view is blurry and the picture is gray, your values will point you in the right direction. Values and principles are critical to making choices. Each choice you make will impact how you will reach your destination and how each chapter will read. Values need, need to be identified at a young age, your age. They help you define your character, set your priorities right, and shape your vision. Your values will allow you to reach decisions that are so fundamental to your day-to-day -day living, such as choosing a career, picking your friends, and the kind of relationship you want to have with your family, work colleagues, and even more pivotal, more pivotal, your relationship with your almighty creator. You will start seeing what is relevant and what is not as you finish writing one chapter and move on to another. You will feel at ease in identifying what is right and what is wrong. You will periodically ask yourself, am I making a difference? And what can I do to make a positive change? Now, there is no such thing as one set of values that applies to all. However, all set of core values have a certain degree of selflessness in them. You give more than you take. Choose work that drives you eagerly to wake up every morning. Work that is rewarding beyond financial, but more for self-fulfillment. Work that gives you a sense of purpose. So whenever you have a chance to talk about your career, those listening can sense the excitement in your voice. Unfortunately, we continue to witness young people who prefer to have jobs that are not challenging enough, nor demanding enough. This would be a mistake because unknowingly, you will start defining your comfort zone at an early age and with it, limit your potential. This will have lasting an effect on your ability to achieve, to excel, and even to deal with life twists and turns. Don't shy away from challenging and demanding environments because that is exactly the kind of work that will sharpen your skills, get you to be quick on your feet, and help you develop thick skin. All of the above are necessary traits as you develop and you grow. Over time, you will notice that your best comes out in adversity. If anything life taught us is that no matter how hard we plan, unforeseen events force us to change course. And this is when mental preparedness gives you an edge. Now, the world will not be the same in the coming decades. We all know that. 
There will be changes to traditional businesses beyond our comprehension or prediction. I'm pretty sure you will receive advice as to which sectors will have future promise. My guess is that some of you today will sit around the table sometime in the future with work colleagues that are robots who will contribute to the task at hand as competently as you. So Franklin versus robots, make sure you win. <laughs> with that in mind, making a definitive career choice as to which sectors to join and which to disregard becomes a bit elusive, especially with the digi digital revolution at the launch pad at an even bigger blast off. However, self-satisfaction and a personal sense of gratification will always be within your grasp. And it is human. As you pursue those many choices, at times you will have to fight your way through, and that's fine. You have to fight your way through, and that's fine, as long as you have prepared yourself well. Remember, as you write your story, the scars of battle as as intriguing as the medals of victory. And if you happen to be a parent, don't give up a dream of a career. Find a career that you can pursue from home or requires fewer on the job hours to accommodate your parental obligations. But don't have a mindset that's either being a parent or having a career. Because before you know it, kids will grow and time keeps ticking. The first job in your career will probably not turn out to be what you had in mind. And that's not unexpected. If the reason being you're not challenged enough, but don't be a quitter for the sake of change. Don't be a quitter because there's too much pressure or the job is too hard. I've seen so many underachievers in their mid-careers regret, the, regret the fact that they jump ships too often, too soon, and quitting became a habit to escape responsibility. As you embark on writing your story, don't fall for the temptation of doing mediocre work for the sake of expediency. When mediocrity becomes instilled in a society, it takes away the natural impulse in us to excel, to impress, to perfect. Today, the spiral nonstop digital engagement too many of us are stuck to is draining the most depletable resources we have as human, time. The temptation to indulge in viral interaction is irresistible. This is where defining your values early on will shelter you from falling victim to this new form of addiction. Now remain engaged, but responsibly. When you start writing your story, you will quickly wake up to the fact that making good use of your time, making the right choices, and making a difference are all connected. Now your guide for writing your story is your faith in yourself and in the belief that you are in your present position for a bigger reason and a larger good. So start writing your story and have a story worthy of telling and good luck. Thank you, Sheikh Hussein, for those words of advice. Will Dean Sarah Styrett Barella please bring the second recipient of an honorary degree to the podium? Richard Renault, Chairman and CEO of TNG Corporation and co chair of Dundee Surreya LP, has worked actively in private equity in Canada, the United States, and Europe for over 40 years. Mr. Renault sat on the Board of Governors and Executive Committee of Concordia University. He was also awarded an honorary degree from Concordia and is Vice Chair Governor Emeritus. Mr. Renault has served on the Board of Governors for Loyola High School and is Chairman of the Board of St. Mary's Hospital Center and its foundation. 
He has also served as a trustee of Franklin University. Mr. Renault and his wife Carolyn have most recently served as the national campaign co-chairs for the Exceptional Care for Exceptional Kids campaign for the Shriners Hospital for Children. He is also instrumental in promoting the arts, serving in the boards of the, Festi uh, the Festival des Arts de saint Sauveur, the Richard Tucker Music Foundation in New York, in addition to being a major supporter of the Orchestre Metropolitain in Montreal. Mr. Renault was honored by Pope John II with the Cross Pro Ecclesia et Pontifice for distinguished service to the Church of Montreal. The Unsung Heroes of Compassion Award from the Dalai Lama and by the Association of Fundraising Professionals for the National Philanthropy Day Award in Quebec. He has also been awarded the title of Fellow of the Order of Chartered Accountants for his exceptional contribution in this profession and in 2011 was recipient of the YMCA Honorary Peace Medal. In 2016, Mr. Renault was named a member of the Order of Canada for his philanthropic generosity as founder of the Roasters Foundation and for his leadership within a number of charitable organizations in the Montreal community. For his leadership as a philanthropist and in recognition of his contributions to the arts, education, and medicine, Franklin University, Switzerland confers upon Mr. Richard Renault the Doctorate of Humane Letters honoris causa. my own speech. <laughs> Mr. Chairman Kim of the Board of Trustees, Mr. President, my wife Carolyn and my son Philip, who is on your board, and uh, fellow honoree and faculty, parents, and most importantly, graduates. When I think about what to say today, I'm reminded by my wife that I sat where you graduates are seated 49 years ago in 1969 to get my degree from Loyola College. It was actually the University of Montreal that conferred degrees those who attended Loyola in those days. My initial thought is drawn from the following verse from 1 Corinthians. I, God not me, have laid the foundation and another built it thereon. But let every man take heed how he built it thereupon. You have achieved with your degree a first step in building the foundation in your life journey. And it will be very important to remember and use the teachings that your education here at Franklin University has given you. Franklin is welcoming, engaged, committed to innovation, and excellence in education, as well as creativity, creative activity and community partnerships. It dares you to be different and draws on the richness of its diversity to transform the individual, to strengthen society, and improve the world. My life has been enriched, enhanced, been purposeful with the different experiences which have been shared here at Franklin as a parent, my son Philip is a graduate and is now on the board, and uh, my daughter-in-law graduated the year after, and they have a beautiful family in, uh, in London, and I was a board member for a number of years. But at the end of the day, uh, my number two son gave me 20 years ago a short summary on life from his Young Entrepreneurs Association, better known as EO today. Life, 
Imagine life as a game in which you are juggling some five balls in the air. You name them, work, family, health, friends, and your spirit. And you're keeping them all these in the air. You will soon understand that work is a rubber ball. If you drop it, it will bounce back. The other four balls, family, health, friends, and spirit are made of glass. If you drop one of these, they will be irrevocably scuffed, marked, nicked, damaged, or even shattered. They will never be the same. You must understand and strive for balance in your life. But how do we do that? Don't undermine your worth by comparing yourself with others. It's because we are all different that each of us is special. Don't set goals by what other people deem important. Only you know what is best for you. Don't take for granted that the things that are closest to your heart. Cling to them as you would your life, for without them, life is meaningless. Don't let your life slip through your fingers by living in the past or for the future. By living your life one day at a time, you live all the days of your life. Don't give up when you still have something to give. Nothing is really over until the moment you stop trying. Don't be afraid to admit that you are less than perfect. It is this fragile tread that binds us to each other. An experience that I had on my, uh, I went to uh, university for four years. I came out with a Bachelor of Commerce in uh, accounting degree. And the first day on the job, uh, the gentleman told me to go get the general ledger. And I went to get the general ledger and I didn't know what it was. So I had no practical experience in dealing with these things. So you should be getting, be very practical about what you do. Don't be afraid to encounter risks. It is by taking chances that we learn how to be brave. Don't shut love out of your life by saying it's impossible to find. The quickest way to receive love is to give. The fastest way to lose love is to hold it too tightly. And the best way to keep love is to give it wings. Don't run through life so fast you forget not only where you've been, but also where you're going. Don't forget a person's greatest emotional need is to feel appreciated. It means both sides. Don't be afraid to learn. Knowledge is weightless, a treasure you can always care, carry easily. Don't use time or words carelessly. We have to be very careful today uh, with what we say and what we hear. Uh, you know, the, uh, Mr. Uh, Bloomberg, Michael Bloomberg was quoted, he says there in the United States now there's an epidemic of dishonesty. Acting with integrity is more important than ever. Life is not a race, but a journey to be savored each step of the way. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift, that's why we call it the present. An additional add-on to the summary on life is my belief in a greater being and the need for a common mission statement, which I believe states the 11th commandment. We need to treat our neighbors as we would expect our neighbors to treat us. We should never forget that. I thank my son for this very sage piece on life because I believe is the way we must lead our lives. It outlines and emphasizes the value of balance. My wife Carolyn has preached this to me for years. As you graduates move forward in the mystery of tomorrow, the challenges of our times are enormous, but not insurmountable. Whatever time we live in our life journey, there are always challenges and mountains to climb. But the fundamentals taken from your time here at Flagland should you give you the base to analyze, meet, and surmount these challenges. It seems that we're always asked to deal with the tribulations and challenges. 
My answer is that it's about value and values, as we heard from our prior speaker, uh, my co-doctorate, which comes from your life experience. We are in one of the most challenging periods of the financial markets due to excesses and lack of understanding of the implications of short-term decisions as they affect long-term value. Pay attention when there's unbridled enthusiasm and the, the bottle I would use is the Tulip Festival in the early 1600s. Believe it or not, tulips were selling at $1,500 each with no reasonable explanation. Companies were formed for the sole purpose of trading tulips, which reached fever pitch in late 1636. By 1637, the bubble had burst and investors lost everything. Think about real value and stick to the values of what a real education can do for you in the real world. In closing, I'd like to say a few words about a subject matter that is dear to me and my family. It is philanthropy. Philanthropy, sharing with our fellow citizens, is important if we are to have a civilized, caring, and healthy society. The former wartime Prime Minister of the UK, Winston Churchill, said the following, we make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. The future and the excellence of education will need more giving from individuals and foundations. You and your family should be committed to this need and I can only encourage all of you to do the same. On behalf of my wife Carolyn and my entire family, we thank you for this great honor, and we are very proud of our long association with Viking University, Switzerland. Thank you very much. Mr. President, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the candidates for the degree of Master of Science. Will the candidates please stand? <laughs> on, on behalf of the faculty, I certify that these persons have completed the required course of study for the master's degree at Franklin University, Switzerland, or will do so by the end of the summer 2018 semester, and they are presented to you for conferring of these degrees at the appropriate time. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and on the recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon you the degree to which you are entitled with all the rights and responsibilities pertaining thereto. The following candidates will receive the degree of Master of Science in International Management. 
from Lome, Togo, Zigubodi Amekodi. From Aspen, Colorado, USA, Thomas Arthur Doyle. From San Diego, California, USA, and graduating with distinction, Austin Fitch. <laughs> From Tbilisi, Georgia, Anna Galua. From Geneva, Switzerland, and graduating with distinction, John Christopher Junot. From New York, New York, USA, Ricky Ruff. From Kowloon, Denmark, and graduating with distinction, Christine Schnittkier. From Celebration Florida, USA, and graduating with distinction, Ali Zepper. Mr. President, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Will the candidates please stand? On behalf of the faculty, I certify that these persons have completed the required course of study at Franklin University, Switzerland, or will do so by the end of the summer 2018 semester. 
and they are presented to you for conferring of these degrees at the appropriate time. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and on the recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon you the degree to which you are entitled with all the rights and responsibilities pertaining thereto. The following candidates will receive the degree of Bachelor of Arts. From Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, with a major in visual communication arts, with an emphasis in studio art, Maryam Abdul Jawad. <laughs> From Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, with a combined major in economics and history, Badr Al Banawi. From Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, with a combined major in history and political science, Yahya al Banawi. <laughs> From Tabuk, Saudi Arabia, with a major in international management, with an emphasis in marketing, Khalid al Gurayed. From Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, with a major in international management, with an emphasis in marketing, Rima Yusuf Ali Reza. <laughs> From Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, with a major in visual communication arts, with an emphasis in studio art, Fatima Al Shair. From Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and Irbid, Jordan, with majors in international banking and finance and international management, and graduating magna cum laude, Fadi Awanazi. From De Pere, Wisconsin, USA, with majors in communication and media studies and international relations, and graduating magna cum laude, Madeline Ames. <laughs> From Seattle, Washington, USA, with a major in environmental studies, with an emphasis in science, and graduating magna cum laude, Eric Andrews. From Dallas, Texas, USA, with a major in international management, Matthew Anthony. From Monterey, Mexico, with majors in art history and visual culture and communication and media studies and graduating magna cum laude, Diego Bonachea Ibanez. From Blaine, Minnesota, USA, with majors in communication and media studies and international relations, Jessica Borgert. <laughs> From
from Melrose, Massachusetts, USA, and Yasmin Hamamet, Tunisia, with majors in history and international relations, and graduating magna cum laude, Joya Noor Chaoud. From Bucharest, Romania, with a major in international economics, Claudia Dumitru. <laughs> From Daniken, Switzerland, with majors in international banking and finance, international economics, and international management, and graduating magna cum laude. Thank you so much. From Ohio, California, USA, with a major in comparative literary and cultural studies, Shannon Finnell. Babylon, New York, USA, with a major in international management with an emphasis in marketing, Sarah Foster. <laughs> From San Diego, California, USA, with a major in environmental studies with an emphasis in science and graduating cum laude, Katherine Gannon. <laughs> From Los Angeles, California, USA, with a major in international management, Nicholas Gritchen. <laughs> From Sao Paulo, Brazil, with a major in international relations, Giovanni Grisendi. <laughs> From Calcutta, India, with a major in international economics, with an emphasis in political economy, Saurav Gupta. <laughs> From Santa Monica, California, USA, with a major in international management, with an emphasis in marketing, Kyle Hamilton. From Tacoma Park, Maryland, USA, with a major in comparative literary and cultural studies and graduating cum laude, Isabel Hendricks Jenkins. From Monterey, Mexico, with majors in international banking and finance and international economics, Pamela Herrera Villagomez. <laughs> From St. Petersburg, Florida, USA, with a major in international management, with an emphasis in marketing, Elizabeth Heston. From Potomac, Maryland, USA, with a major in international management with an emphasis in marketing, Delon Hedirachi. <laughs> 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 
from Livermore, California, USA, with majors in international economics and psychology, and graduating cum laude, Alana Hindia. From Los Angeles, California, USA, with a major in international banking and finance, Alani Jack. From Red Mesa, Colorado, USA, and Malta, Switzerland, with a major in communication and media studies, and graduating magna cum laude, Gabrielle Quinchalo. <laughs> From Seattle, Washington, USA, with majors in international economics and international management, with an emphasis in marketing, Gabriella Bria Colberg. From Moscow, Russia, with majors in international banking and finance and international economics, and graduating magna cum laude, Anastasia Kuzovknina. From Athens, Greece, with majors in international banking and finance and international relations, with an emphasis in political economy, Kasanthipi Lapa. <laughs> From Seattle, Washington, USA, with a major in history, Serena Leone. <laughs> From Tampa, Florida, USA, with a major in international management, with an emphasis in marketing, Justin Liedman Kochaka. <laughs> From Portland, Oregon, USA, with majors in art history and visual culture and visual communication arts, with an emphasis in studio arts, Katherine Lauer. <laughs> From Fairfield, Connecticut, USA, with a major in international management, Evan McGuffey. <laughs> From Houston, Texas, USA, with a major in international management, with an emphasis in marketing, Frida Martinez. <laughs> From LaGrange Park, Illinois, USA, with a major in international economics and graduating cum laude, Connor McCormick. <laughs> From Serengo, Switzerland, with a major in environmental studies, Alexandra Meyer. <laughs> From Krasnoyarsk, Russia, with a major in international management, Katrin Mikachian. <laughs> From
from Corona, California, USA, with a major in history, Jordan Morales. From Marin County, California, USA, with a major in international management, Amber Mulcahy. From Torino, Italy, with a major in communication and media studies, Viola Naldini. From Arare, Zimbabwe, with a major in international economics, Varizo Divere. Washington, D.C., USA, with a major in international management, Nicholas Nelson. <laughs> From Egipastus, Kazakhstan, with a major in international relations, with an emphasis in political economy, Artyom Pavlinger. <laughs> From St. Petersburg, Russia, with a major in psychology, Ilona Pertina. <laughs> From Moscow, Russia, with a combined major in communications and media studies and management, Victoria Playak Plekina. From Moscow, Russia, with a major in international management, Mikhail Popov. <laughs> From Seattle, Washington, USA, with majors in art history and visual culture and comparative literary and cultural studies, and graduating cum laude, Mackenzie Powell. <laughs> From Andermatt, Switzerland, with a major in international management, Caroline Renner. <laughs> From Breck, California, USA, with a combined major in communications and media studies and management, Erica Reyes. <laughs> From Laguna Niguel, California, USA, with majors in environmental studies and international management, Rachel Richardson. <laughs> From Bethel, New York, USA, with a major in international banking and finance, Alexander Rokiki.
from La Jolla, California, USA, with a major in art history and visual culture, Gabriella Sanderson. From Leesburg, Virginia, USA, with a major in communication and media studies, Ariana Satina. <laughs> From Los Angeles, California, USA, with majors in French studies and international banking and finance, Gerard Schiappa. <laughs> From Portland, Oregon, USA, with a major in international relations and graduating magna cum laude, Carly Sita. <laughs> From Amman, Jordan, with a major in international management, with an emphasis in marketing, Sharif Shaban. From Gaza, Palestine, with a major in international management, with an emphasis in finance, and graduating cum laude, Hanin Siam. <laughs> From Anchorage, Alaska, USA, with a major in environmental studies, with an emphasis in science, and graduating magna cum laude, Yana Smith. <laughs> From San Diego, California, USA, with majors in history and international relations, and graduating magna cum laude, Sean Solis. From Serengo, Switzerland, with a major in international relations and graduating summa cum laude, Leslie Tagogi. From Los Angeles, California, USA, with a major in environmental studies, Gemma Tolton. From Istanbul, Turkey, with a major in international management, with an emphasis in marketing, Ahmed Uras. From Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan, with majors in international banking and finance and international economics, Denise Usupova. <laughs> From Brasilia, Brazil, with a major in international relations, Rodrigo Vieira Camargo. From Somerset, New Jersey, USA, with a major in visual communication arts, with an emphasis in fashion studies, and graduating cum laude, Alyssa Isabel Vernes. <laughs> From San Diego, California, USA, with a major in history, Christian Wall. <laughs> From 
from Boulder, Colorado, USA, with a major in international relations, Chelsea Wiley. From Winter Park, Florida, USA, with a major in visual communication arts with an emphasis in studio art, Allison Yant. Graduates, at this point, you can move, move your tassel from right to left. <laughs> Professor Corinne Young and Professor Armando Zanecchia will now introduce the graduate student speaker and the valedictorian, respectively. It is my honor to introduce Jabodi Amakudi, a Master of Science and in International Management student. Jibodi, known as Fabrice to us, was chosen by his classmates to represent them at this graduation. Fabrice has an inspiring story. He grew up in Togo and earned his Bachelor of Science degree with honor in telecom engineering at Ghana Technology University. After graduating from university, Fabrice worked for telecom services provider as a field engineer on projects for Ericsson Ghana and Ericsson Benin. After several years of working, Fabrice started to think that earning a master's degree in management would help him to further his career. He began to save money so this dream would become a reality. Fabrice's unwavering determination to study outside of Africa led him to meet a Franklin alumnus who had recently decided to offer a full scholarship to a talented student from Togo who was out with, without the means to pay for going to university outside of Africa. Fabrice's impressive application and inspiring statement of purpose won him a full scholarship to study in the master's program here at Franklin. This opportunity would take him for the first time outside of West Africa. Switzerland and Togo could not be more different. As you might imagine, Fabrice has collected many stories to tell about his experience this past year. Fabrice's first Swiss story begins on the day he arrived in Lugano. While waiting to get the key to his dorm room, he decided to order a Coca-Cola at the restaurant next to the dorm. A Coca-Cola in Togo cost about 300 West African CFA. So when Fabrice received the bill for five Swiss francs, or 2,760 Central African francs, he panicked. <laughs> How would he have enough money to live here? Luckily, a classmate took him shopping for food in Ponte Teresa. <laughs> Fabrice was relieved as the prices were lower in Italy, relatively speaking. <laughs> Fabrice has proven to be a valuable contribution to the Master of Science in International Management program. He has offered different perspectives on many issues that challenged our previously held beliefs, both students and faculty members. We too gave Fabrice pause for thought as he found some of his paradigms shifting. One can always count on a smile from Fabrice and a word of encouragement. He regularly sends inspirational emails in French to his classmates and to me. Fabrice genuinely cares about people. 
His experience has been transformative, and so it is not surprising that Fabrice wants to help other Togolese students, student leaders, to earn university scholarships to study abroad. In early June, Fabrice will begin working as a project manager for the newly founded Carl Jungbecker Foundation. The mission of the foundation is to help talented African students from poor financial backgrounds to pursue higher education in Europe. Please join me in welcoming Fabrice to the stage. speechless. <laughs> I'll ask the graduate student to put their hand together for everybody here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm honored and humbled to address you on behalf of the 2018 graduate cohort. My name is Jigbodi Amekudi, an international management student from Togo. As nervous I am standing here today, I'm also proud to be sharing my experience with you all. First, I would like to congratulate all the students here, including myself, for finally graduating. <laughs> we must also acknowledge those who helped make our university experience possible. Today, as we prepare to move toward the future, it is pertinent that we hold fast to our support networks, those who have encouraged and grounded us throughout the years. Professors, parents, families, friends, and mentors, I take this moment to thank you all. We ask that you continue to support us as we embark on our future endeavors. I still remember my first day in Switzerland as yesterday. I was confused and felt awkward because it was my first time leaving Africa. Right away, I met this wonderful friend who became more than a brother to me, and he helped me and stood by me in all my frustrations, buying bars or tickets, trashing the waste, explaining few things that were useful to me. I did not know what to do without him. Thank you very much, John Christopher Junod. For the graduate cohort experience, what a wonderful friendship group we have made. The pride of belonging to a great class and the fun we had. As a class, we helped each other along the way. The challenges we shared and the teamwork we enjoyed were absolutely fantastic. The supportive environment helped everyone and was free of judgment. Thanks to the class of 2018, Thomas, Anna, Austin, Ali, Ricky, Jeff, Christine, and John for being amazing people. Clap for yourself. We also have learned that hard work and dedication drive our success. Someone once said that feedback is the breakfast of champions. I know the improvement that I've made after key pieces of feedback from my peers. Perhaps, most importantly of all, we have learned just how much being true to yourself has meant to us. For the university experience, coming here, I had my expectations, but the reality turned out to be so much better. It is hard to mention all the good things I experienced in this place, but I will try to highlight at least some of them now. First, there are too many advantages and too much experience this place gave me diverse and well-structured studying program, wise and kind professors, and staff always there to help us and guide us. International atmosphere, friendly student, great facilities and accommodations, various teaching methods and materials, as well as wonderful exchange study opportunities. 
Secondly, the MSI program has built strong and flexible foundation, which will be the core on which we build our future lives. I believe we will be braver, more confident, more responsible, and we approach our lives in a much more optimistic way. We can never stop learning. I cannot count how many times I have failed in life, and yet I'm not giving up, because if there's no struggle, there's no progress. What drives me, what pushes me, what motivates me, why am I saying this? Because I'm always optimistic to be successful and be able to serve others. As leaders, we have a responsibility to our communities and to the world we are living in. Optimism is a key to everything. Positivity of mind brings positive events and emotion comes to life. Never believe anyone who says your destiny is decided by the stars or something else. You are the only person who can build and rule your destiny. And it's only up to you to know what your life will be like and no one else. Start from yourself, clear your mind, believe in yourself, do not doubt in yourself. Set the right goals, dream big, and go for your dreams, and you will make everything happen. Always stay positive and do not let anyone tell you what you can or you cannot do. Be true to yourself no matter what, simple as it is. Your destiny is in your hand, remember this, and you will achieve the unachievable. Thanks you all for attention and congratulations. I'm delighted to introduce the valedictorian of the class of 2018, Ms. Carly Seidel. I've known Carly as her advisor and professor since she arrived at Franklin, and have observed with great delight her journey as an eager first-year student to her arrival today as a valued Franklin scholar, academic globetrotter, and highly valued member of our community. Carly, a native of Portland, Oregon, attended a private Jesuit high school where she excelled in cross-country running, perhaps a sign of things to come. She loves travel and is usually on the road most weekends. She was a Franklin Global intern in conjunction with Caritas, where she worked for three months with refugees in Paderborn, Germany, with support from a National Security Language Initiative for Youth Scholarship, Carly studied abroad in Tajikistan where she studied Persian in an intense immersion program. She plans to return there this summer as she feels it was this experience that was instrumental in building and reinforcing her self-confidence. As she noted to me, after learning Tajik in four months, she felt she could do just about anything. She also independently studied Central Asian politics in Kyrgyzstan, living with local women in Bishkek, where she continued to study Persian in true Franklin style. She likes to be outside her comfort zone and is inspired by the patterns of life across cultures that characterize our collective identity. I was delighted when Carly took all my classes, every one of them, uh, and uh, including my academic travel recently to South Africa and Swaziland. In all cases, Carly was a stellar student, exhibiting consistent personal critical reflection and articulate discourse on the topics we covered. Her senior thesis, entitled International Counter-Narcotics Initiatives in Tajikistan and Afghanistan, was simply stated, exceptional. Her research was original, scholarly, conclusive, and overall impressive. Her committee unanimously agreed that it was one of the best they had read, and we certainly encourage Carly to publish her findings. Her public presentation was equally as memorable. Carly likes reading books in other languages, particularly German. Her future plans include graduate school, possibly at the American University of Cairo, where she hopes to receive a master's in teaching English as an additional language. When she returns to Portland, she plans to work with Mercy Corps, a charitable organization that helps people around the world survive crisis, overcome challenges, and build brighter futures. 
As you will see in a moment, Carly is clearly unique. I believe her valedictory address breaks with tradition, yet illustrates the very special person that she is. Please join me in welcoming the valedictorian of the class of 2018, Carly Seidel. Class of 2018, we made it to the finish line. When reflecting on my time at Franklin, I realized that the most important lessons learned during my university experience have come from the individuals I have encountered here. My fellow students, professors, and staff have taught me to face global challenges with openness, positivity, and bravery. Instead of reciting my speech, I have decided to Franklinize the lyrics of the song, I Lived, by One Republic. With the help of fellow graduate, Christian Wall, who inspires me not only through his passion for music, but also through his positivity and curiosity, I will sing it for you now. If you can, think about those you have learned from at Franklin. Who taught you to be passionate, to explore the world, and to smile more often? Today, I encourage you to let your Franklin family know how much they mean to you. Tomorrow, as you lock up your empty room, drive away from Sarango, or fly so high above the Alps that they disappear from view, think of, <laughs> think of how to use these lessons and memories to overcome the challenges you will undoubtedly face. Thank you. Picture that lake. 
Well, that's a tough act to follow. <laughs> But I would now like to invite Trustee Inigo Garcia to address the graduating class about the Alumni Association. Congratulations, class of 2018. After years of hard work and dedication, you've earned your Franklin University Switzerland degree. My name is Inigo Garcia. I am a 2011 Franklin graduate and a member of the Board of Trustees and Alumni Council. And on behalf of the Franklin Alumni Association, we applaud you for reaching this important milestone. As you now prepare to embark on the next phase of your life, of course, note that you're not alone. In addition to your friends and family, you are now one of more than 7,000 Franklin alumni worldwide to maintain your relationship with your alma mater and your fellow alumni, we welcome you to participate in the Franklin Alumni Association. As an active member, you'll be able to keep Franklin close, doing your part to continue making our university stronger. To help you start, here are some easy ways to get involved. Be informed. Read our alumni newsletter. Keep your contact information current. Follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and why not Instagram. By staying informed, you'll make a wonderful ambassador for the university. Remain involved. Whether it's participating in a Franklin club, attending alumni events, serving as an admissions ambassador, traveling the world with our alumni travel program, or returning home to Lugano, you can join, you can join thousands of alumni who work together to preserve the excellence of Franklin University Switzerland. We welcome you, we congratulate you, and we look forward to helping you maintain your relationship with Franklin University Switzerland. I hope to see you all back in Lugano in May 2020 as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of this truly special university, our global alumni reunion. Thank you. Thank you, Inigo. And uh, that really is a, a heartfelt message. It's a, it's a bittersweet day for us because we, we lose you uh, and uh, we would love to keep you in the family and you are part of our family. Well, we're almost done, but I'd like to conclude the ceremony with a few remarks of my own. This is my chance to say something. Uh, you are now graduates of Franklin University and in a few minutes we'll celebrate that by throwing our caps up in the air. Uh, but you now hold in your hand a degree from Franklin that tells the world that you're educated. You've worked hard. We should be proud of that accomplishment. But what does that degree mean? It means that we, Franklin, as an institution, believe that you have the critical skills and the flexibility of mind to succeed in what our mission reminds us is an increasingly complex and interconnected world. It is also a world, as we've heard from our speakers today that is changing rapidly. That's why your education cannot be an end in itself. It must be something that allows you to continue to learn and through the ability to continue your learning, you should be able to succeed at whatever you decide to do. To be educated means that you understand that there's still a lot to learn and that one of the joys of life is that we will go learning to the ends of our days. Education is far more than learning. Education goes far beyond the mastery of any one particular subject. B.F. Skinner, the famous and sometimes controversial behaviorist, wrote that education is what remains when what you have learned is forgotten. Education is broad, it's inclusive, it's open. With it comes responsibility. Education must include awareness that goes beyond the individual. It must include the understanding that along with privilege comes responsibility. It must acknowledge that your education is not just for you, that it can be something greater that will be of service to us all. I believe that we have prepared you well. You have joined the ranks of an educated elite. 
I hope that as a graduate of Franklin, you will become, as we say, responsible, compassionate, and collaborative. We have placed our hopes and energies in you, in the faith that you will accept this challenge and that through it, you will prosper. Will the graduating class please stand? Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends, I present to you the Franklin University Switzerland's graduating class of 2018. Please join me in congratulating them.